Hi, this is Pam from Heart of Texas, and I want to show you our new Big Texas album. This will be, uh, kits will be for sale in Houston and San Marcos at the CKC shows. This is about a 9 by 10 album. Everything comes pre-cut, and all your stamping is done. The only thing that you really have to do is to emboss with copper zine all your uh, cutouts that are going to be included in the kit. The flag um, is out of real leather and it's already stamped for you, so you have that. Um, this is a, a burlap flower that is stacked up and stiffened, and it has a tag under it that's stamped with the cities and just torn and added. This is a republic of uh, established in 1836, and it's embossed and ready for you to add with a, a chipboard circle. The concho comes in the kit. I just sanded mine down and added some uh, mushroom and copper alcohol ink and put it on with a piece of felt and it turned it to a little bit. I sanded the, the concho first with a uh, just a sandpaper or a sanding tool to take the shiny off and then put this on here. Your rusted star. These two come with holes and jump rings, so you can uh, just add them to each other. The jewel star um, will vary from kit to kit, but I would use a glue, uh, hot glue, or a, because this nothing sticks to this rusted star. Very good. The Texas and all the other words and everything that are included in the kit, I embossed with zinc copper embossing powder. I didn't use the gloss, it's just the straight, or glittery, I think is what it is. I just used the plain embossing powder from Zing. This is, the cover is done with uh, Delusions cho Melted Chocolate Spray. And uh, it doesn't come in the kit, but we will have it available in our booth for sale in a limited quantity. And I also use um, Distress Stain. This is Wild Honey and Vintage Photo. Mostly I use probably these four inks I use in this one. You can't see the cover of it. This is uh, Vintage Photo and this is Black Soot, Tea Dye, and Mustard Seed. I like Mustard Seed on with the Vintage Photo because it gives it just a little lightness on it and I use those throughout. I also use the uh, little Tim Holtz applicator right there to do all this. Um, I'll show you as we go through the book what I used the different inks or just inks on. So the cover has a uh, jute or twine that we wrapped around it about five or six times tied it in a bow, and then I used some glue dots to secure it. Probably a hot glue gun would be a little better. I just didn't have one at the time. Um, a yellow star that's stuck in the middle of this. And this is your inside. It's done the same way as um, the cover. And I'll do a piece of chipboard for you so you can kind of see what I'm doing. This picture, uh, if you want to add a picture down here, you want to do it before you tie this string on. Go ahead and spray your cover, but just make sure you uh, add this picture before you tie the, the string on. This comes in your kit. It's a name of cities, and it's very, very tiny and hard to stamp, but you got it. And uh, it comes. there's a piece of chipboard in here. You'll have to trim this down and mount it onto that. Uh, piece of chipboard. I didn't pop dot it up. I just left it mounted on the piece of real thin chipboard. Uh, this is a pony rider with the Texas flag and it's embossed and in your kit just to add a circle to the circle that's included. And this is page one. This is the leaning cowboy. You can put these in any order you want. Uh, just whichever one you want to be the cover page that's going to show through the Texas cutout. This is just some uh, scrap material that you'll cut from what's included in your kit. You'll have the two border strips of stars and I just used the vintage photo on that to that says Tita. So never mind that. I use the vintage photo 
to just go over that lightly. The cowboy is the heat embossed. This is a five by seven picture. You can use whatever size or multiple pictures on this. And I did sand the edges and distress them just to look a little more rugged. And uh, some white jute that's wrapped around and tied like a lariat um, since he was roping this. This has some week of Stella uh, silver, a uh, silver clear glitter that's on here. For the leaning cowboy, I used a vintage photo and some black soot and a little bit of the mustard seed to do this. I just, you just want to rub kind of gently in a circle and get it covered the way you want it on a, on a flat surface. You don't want him up and loose so he can get bent. This is the back of the leaning cowboy. This is cut out of some paper that's included in your kit. Um, this is a scrap piece of paper from your kit. All your pages are pre-cut, so you want to check and apply those before you start doing any anything else. Um, and the same with him. He's done the same way using the same materials. This is a, a badge. This is the large badge, and I used the copper embossing powder and just tied a piece of bandana that's included in your kit. And let's see, this is the star page. The star is, um, there'll be two large stars that are not attached to the star page. The star page has one star, so actually there's going to be three stars stacked up. But you want to put canvas onto the loose stars. Put your score tape, and I wouldn't use wet glue, but put your score tape on the chipboard burnish it down and then pull it up and put your canvas on. You can kind of stretch and pull it a little easier and manipulate the canvas and you obviously kind of want it to fry some. I ink the edges of it with uh, distress uh, with vintage photo to just give it a little bit of, of distress. This is the Isle of Texas is a Texas dye that I knew in that uh, Mark from Deadbeat Designs has come out with and I love it. It cuts like butter. This is also, I think, his stamp that comes with the various cities. It's larger than the other one. And I, uh, so I stamped it on a tag and you get it already stamped. You can just cut the tag in half and put it over your picture uh, like this with a badge or you can use the string that comes with it. This is a 4 by 6 photo that's horizontal. So you can use horizontal and vertical on this page. This is the back side of the, the uh, star. Just a badge in the center. There's a hat down here. Again, I did the same thing. I used the vintage photo, the black soot, and a little bit of the mustard seed. The hat band has some silver Wink of Stella on it if you want to add that to it. And the Lone Star is just embossed with a copper zinc. This is a 4x6 that is a vertical picture, and I used a stub punch on that and sanded the edges. This is um, our Longhorn page. The paper's pre-cut, so it says Texas here and Longhorns here. This is a 4x6 that I had to trim just a little bit off of the, of the bottom to uh, get him on here right and get it on this side so it wouldn't cover up. I didn't want to cover excuse me, covering up the Texas. To do the Longhorn is the same thing. I use the Vintage Photo Distress Ink, a tiny bit of black soot, a little mustard, and some tea dye around the edges of just the body itself. For the horns, I painted it with acrylic, um, ivory, or antique. Well, um, this is antique white, so whichever one you want to use, just whatever you have handy. Painted a base coat on it and let it dry, and then I took some golden molding paste and just with my fingers uh, just patted it on his horns. It's it's not bumpy. I just wanted it to have a little dimension, so I just patted it on his horns on the front and back. They're both done the same. I just took a brush and painted around where I thought his horns would grow and let this went on with my fingers. Uh, if you don't have it, it's fine. Uh, and then I went back and painted again 
with the ivory over it just to give it the same color. This was pretty white before I went back over that. And then I just lightly went over it with the blending tool with uh, some vintage photo just to dirty up his horns a little bit. And the same thing on the back, just did back and front. This one had a little bit of the yellow tea dye on it, or mustard seed, so, you know, there's some of them are like kind of like him. He's got a little white space in his in his front of his head. He has a nice set of long horns. I love the way they curve up. This is just a scrap that I don't usually mat my photos much, but I usually put some color back here for some just for some background. It's a pair of boots, the same thing. I use the vintage photo and let's see if I can get in here a little and um, some black soot on his heels and just distressed them a little. This is a circle that comes in your kit. I just covered it with the blue that's on the leaning cowboy paper. A scrap of that. I stacked two of your stars, a large one and a smaller medium one, and then tied uh, a little rope loop for a lariat. This was originally going to be my um, cover sheet page, first page, but I changed my mind because I like the Bucking Cowboy. So whatever you choose to use is is up to you. It's just the pictures of your choice. And I know, you know, some of you are not, well, not probably none of you are going to have these pictures. So just work with the one that you like the best and put it on there. It'll all look great peeking through that negative space. This one is matted twice. Um, which is one of the few times that I ever mat a picture and it's the, the matting's not included so you can just mat by your choice. The Texas is Texans is uh, embossed with copper. I don't know if you can see that very well so it's on there. Um, again the pair of boots and a badge that's copper embossed. The windmill was uh, the same theory. I used the vintage photo, the the other two distressing vintage photo will do it all on its own in the black soot. And I sanded it a little. Don't you don't want to sand it too much because this is, you know, a standalone piece and you don't want to weaken it too much, but just a little bit on the inside right here. This is just painted with a light gray acrylic paint um, and inked a little bit and sanded. I went over it with the vintage photo once that's done. And the star was is a copper embossed star that's that comes in your kit. This is the back side of the windmill page. Again, it's the same process on the back. I just kind of freehanded it. It's not a perfect windmill, but he's been in some tornadoes, so he'd be all right. And then this uh, is torn paper here, the blue, and then a strip of the striped paper, which has the doily punch the lace. It's a tonic punch and I just punched I think it's a two by seven inch strip and I just punched it on either side and cut it and then just stacked them on, layered them on top of each other. Piece of burlap I just put on with some score tape and then folded this up and with score tape right there. This is Mark's other stamp, deadbeat stamp die cut. It's his blue bonnets and let's see if you can see them. You can't get them. I can't get them back. Here we go. This has, um, I used just some white marker to fill in some little white dots on blue bonnets, blue bonnet sleeves. And I just kind of drew some freehand doodling on the on the leaves and the, the blue bonnets themselves and um, just glued them to the page after I tucked this under. Some of the leaves are on top. Some of them are, are on the bottom. And the circle is cut from this scraps of this paper and another rusty star with some uh, white jute just tied and glued on. I think I just used glossy accents to glue it on. Glossy accents is a real good adhesive too. Um, takes well to some of the fiber and paint that we're using. And uh, yeah. The next page is the boot page. This page, um, I said I don't mat much, but I did in this one for some reason. This is actual denim from jeans, and you need to put your score tape 
onto your chipboard, burnish it, and then pull it up and uh, stick your denim down to the chipboard. Um, I put my boots on first. Boots you can use a, a Scotch quick dry adhesive, whatever glossy accents, whatever you want. Um, just don't over glue. And I just left this loose and then went back and put my cover on my the denim on my jeans and then glued this flat down once I matted my pictures and put them on. This the only about the only covering you have to do here is uh, you just need to do some vintage photo on a little black soot and a little distressing on your boots and they're ready to go. This has a piece of burlap, a gold star, and um, a piece of bandana with a piece of string tied into it. Uh, and just I think the string's just actually glued on top. I think there's some just loose string tied on there. You can do it however you want. And a gold and a, another gold star. This has um, a stamped bucking horse rider. Uh, this one I sprayed with the Delusion uh, spray. This is a lightweight chipboard, so I sprayed it with that. An embossed star and a piece of jute here. This is a piece of the actual leather, and uh, I just cut the corners out of it. Uh, I don't know why. And uh, a gold or copper star and then a little white bubble. The same process on the boots. Uh, a Texas is cut Texas, Texas is cut out of uh, just one of the pieces of paper that you'll have and I went over the letters Texas with the Wink of Stella just clear and it's shiny but you probably can't see it in that. And this is the the last page. This is an 8 by 10 it's 10 inches here, 8 inches here. Um, photo that I just that I obviously had enlarged and just put onto the cover. I used the tea dye and just gently, lightly rubbed it across the bottom above, just maybe an inch or so above where the picture was going to go. If you want to use it on your entire inside back cover and use different photos, then that's fine. And if you, you don't like that look, once you get it done, you can always cover it up with the with the Delusion Sprite. It covers right over it. And uh, this Texas Forever, the Texas is the obviously the part that comes out of the front, and I just glued it on with an ATG gun. The blue bonnets, again, is embossed in copper. The fence uh, is just some wire that uh, and sticks, fence, posts. And I see, I'm going to get as close as I can so you can see how I, I just wrapped it around. I started at the top of the fence along here and wrapped the wire around sometimes two, sometimes three, and left it kind of loose in the middle. Got all that done, tied it off, cut it off. Tim Holt scissors went back and did the bottom again. And then got over here and one fence post needed some repair. This was just vintage photo um, and some a little bit of mustard seed and a little bit of distressing. Once you get all the wires on, then just go back, I think it was one eighth inch score tape, put it on the back of each one of these, and then stick your fence down. You can, you know, kind of position it one after the other and pull your tape off as you go. The back is finished the same way as the front. It uses the the melted chocolate distress stain. When I made this one before, um, they didn't have this, and this is a hundred times easier to use than what I had used in the previous years to make it look in like leather. And again, I'll just slip through it again. You can see the cowboy that's cut out of this. When you spray your cover, the front cover, you want to leave the Texas inside and spray it as one complete unit and if you're going to use it like I did in the back. If you want to paint it, go ahead and take it out. If you want to paint it a different color or cover it with paper, whatever you want to do. But I liked the, the look of this, so I just left it in. And uh, this is the inside cover. You can see that. 
and The Leaning Cowboy. This is a fun book. It really doesn't take long because we've done a lot of the work. You just have to emboss this, ink these. It's not a lot of painting and cleanups, just some inking uh, the scissors, the back of the cowboy and his bucking horse. The Foley's over to here to see. This is the Isle of Texas. I love this stamp with the cities on it. I use it a lot. Um, the back of the star page. This is with canvas and the longhorn page and this is the other page. The back again. This is really easy to do, um, and the paint. If you don't have the molding paste and you don't want to use it, uh, just paint it. It'll be fine. It'll look like a cowboy because. It just kind of, I liked the way his, the texture his horns had, so I kind of tried to mimic that. This is the wagon train with the windmill page. This is the back of that with the burlap strip, the cutouts punched out. This is the blue bonnets and the folded up burlap with the circle and the star to hold it. The boot page, another piece of burlap, a star up here, and again, this is the back of the boot with the back. I probably would have pop dotted him up if I was going to do it again, but uh, just didn't become important when I was trying to finish it. Uh, this is the back inside page, and uh, with the fence. You can use the fence elsewhere in here. You can use pieces of the fence. You just have a lot of wire, so you can play with it however you want to. Or use the pieces of the fence in various places. Um, I like this picture of the of the blue bonnet. The Texas Forever is done for you. You just need to mount it on a two and a half inch chipboard circle that we include. And this is the back of it. And uh, I will show you how to spray the chipboard. Hang on. Okay, this is uh, a piece of scrap chipboard, our chipboard. All chipboard reacts differently. It just depends on the color, the trees they use, the recycled stuff they use. So uh, anything you spray with that's chipboard and it's raw surface is going to react differently. Uh, you want to get two thicknesses of paper towels and the I was having issues when I was spraying this just on the craft mat because it was leaking under and leaving an edge around here that I didn't like when I did went to do the inside because it didn't go away. So uh, my husband really say that too loud suggested I put the paper towels down and it worked well. So you're going to have your Texas shape that would still be in here. So it's all going to be a solid sheet if you plan to use it like that. And just want to use your milk chocolate melted. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it milk. Melt chocolate, melted chocolate ink spray. Shake it a few times. I'm going to hold it about 10 to 12 inches. Um, I'm going to hold this up because I'm right under the air conditioner vent and it blow over there. Just spray over this. And you can see. And you can kind of let it sit a minute and see where it's going to soak in and where you need it. The little blobs are going to be fine, so you don't have to worry about them. Just like magic, it covers. I want to spray a few more. And let them let it sit. And once it dries, it's going to become lighter. And... Uh, I just you can just let it sit here until you make sure you have it covered the way you want it because you don't want to pick it up and set it back down in any of this ink. And I can see that I want to spray it right here on the edges a little. 
And if you want to distress your edges, you certainly can. I, I didn't. Uh, I'm sure they'll be distressed enough on their own after being handled a lot. Um, so once this is kind of dry, you can turn the heat gun on to dry it for a little bit. And uh, I'm going to play like I dried that for a long time. And see, it leaked just a little because I moved it, but that'll be okay. So it's going to look like this. You're going to have a nice little stencil. And then you would get some new paper and spray the back again. So that's how I'm going to spray this one. And let it sit. And that little bit of leakage right around that didn't make any difference. It worked out fine. And this is what I, but you want to let your front side dry before you do the back side because you don't want too much paint going into it. And once you pull it up, if it's a little bumpy, starts to buckle a little when it dries, starts to dry, just put it under a heavy book or something. Once it's dry and it'll flatten itself back out and it'll become pliable because right now it's extremely wet. But that's how easy it is to spray this uh, about 10 to 12 inches off. Just don't have your fans blowing and you can use your heat gun. Thanks.